that. If you're an actress, then you know you have to let your significant other know that there are certain, you know, make them feel comfortable, bring them on set, show them that you're not really having sex, and it's just good acting if it's good, you know. And uh, if they believe that you're really having sex, that means you did a good job acting. But um, we have to make that partner feel comfortable in knowing, because of course it's a big deal. I mean, I think, I think, I think to be married or to be dating an actor, you got to be crazy. <laughs> First of all, let me just say that uh, I don't date actors. Men or women, I don't do actors. Um, I just think it's too much. So that's my advice. <laughs> I can just imagine those conversations. It was just acting, dear. Or, yeah, it really was a pleasurable for me. It was just... Well, that's the thing, because it absolutely could be pleasurable. And I think that it should, because if you're acting and you're, you're in the moment and you're, you're believing that it's really pleasurable, that's where it gets kind of confusing. That's why... Everyone's always breaking up and getting divorced in Hollywood because you get so into it, you get so you get you get so passionate, and so into your moment that you don't really know what's real and what's not. You kind of lose focus a little bit sometimes, and that's why people are falling in love on set and breaking up after the movie's done and falling in love during a movie because you're so close to this person. I mean, like I said, you're 14 hours on set where you're playing, breaking up, having a fight, crying, you know, depressive, hanging out with your girlfriends, and that's all before lunch. And then after lunch, you're going to do the same thing in that same order again. You're going to cry. You're going to be happy. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. So you're extremely vulnerable all day long, and, uh, and, and you make friends with the people that you're the closest to. And uh, so I'd be sitting on set with, you know, Frank, uh, Jason, who played Frank, and uh, I told one of my, my other co-stars, I said, you know, I think I'm falling in love with this guy. And they said, Christina, you're not falling in love with him. You don't even know Jason. You're falling in love with Frank, which is the character. So, of course, because you're sitting on set and you're talking about your characters, you're talking about, you know, things that are relevant. And uh, so, yeah, you don't really know them sometimes. You know them on only one level. So you have to be careful about that. <laughs> is acting a hypersexual profession? A hypersexual? I mean, ju I'm just thinking about all the work, like acting class, and it's so it's it's body work. I mm -hmm. mean, you're working oh, yeah. with the body all the time. Oh yeah. And you're tapping into your emotions mm -hmm. all the time, and you're. Mm. I can't think of any profession that's so hypersexual because I think like actual sex work would like kill your sexuality, huh. but like this, you're like heightening your emotions mm. and your your use of your body. Mm. What do you think? Oh, yeah. No, I think that hypersensitive would come to me more, mm -hmm. would sound more appropriate to say hypersensitive. I mean, I think to be an actor, you have to be so tapped into to all your feelings and other people's feelings and people in general. I'm fascinated by just people and what they think about things and their thought processes because that's what acting is, is having, you know, a thread of thoughts from one thought to another thought, from one thought to another thought. And you're just going into the character's thoughts. And you can't be having Christina thoughts while you're playing Ebony, while you're playing a character. You gotta be having Ebony thoughts the whole time. And uh, a prime example of someone who you know plays such a wide range of characters would be like Meryl Streep, who's always playing like a different character. That's if you're really, really lucky. I mean, she's she's an icon. She's you know she's on a whole different level. A lot of actors end up playing like an Ava Longoria, end up playing the same type of characters over and over and over again. And then of course you're putting a lot of your own. Ava Longoria thoughts into the character thoughts and they're all kind of merging together because it's not so much of a stretch of a character. Um, I'm very excited for a movie that I got signed on to do that I'm going to be playing a character that's extremely not sexy. That's, um, that's very sweet and she, uh, one of the leads in this movie finds this character, finds my character in a mental hospital, in a mental institution and I've been there in and out because I'm very depressed because both my parents died. And I'm um, excited to play this role with, you know, no makeup on and just something that's going to be more of a stretch for me. I don't, on a day-to-day, -day, daily basis, go sit in a mental hospital. So I'm going to have to do some research on that. And I'm going to have to see how, you know, what, what it's like to be in there and just that lifestyle and tap into those character thoughts, which are going to be very different because I'm a very happy person and I don't get sad for very long. Feeling sad is fine with me, but as long as it doesn't last too long. So for someone to be like mentally depressed and on medication for depressing for depression, um, that's a stretch for me. So I'm really excited to play this role because it's going to be a challenge, and uh, and to take off all sexy and to not wear anything sexy and to not show any TNA or anything like that. It's not about that. So um, so that will be more of a character stretch. I'm excited for that. 
Not afraid it will bring back memories of the time you were institutionalized when you were in high school and had that breakdown. And... I think I'll be okay. I think I'll get through it. It's all good. <laughs>